Oh, that's better. Heh. <laughs> okay, let's get started. All right. A little bit about my method. Again, I say that a lot. Um, your tightest fit is the first assembly with a dovetail. And then when you disassemble and assemble, it gets weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker each time. Um, I'm not real big on going from saw to assembly and glue up and done. I'm going to have to take this carcass apart at least twice uh, for fit and sliding the back in and just building the insides for the drawers to ride upon. So I'm going to cut to the line as best as possible. That leaves me a little bit of meat to adjust it. And um, my saw cuts won't get good till about halfway through this usually the first joint and I always do the top first which is not brilliant but uh, you did the bottoms first then your arrows would be at the bottom and then your better cutting would be at the top but I'm going to uh, attempt it and we'll see what happens okay. I'm going to have a little discussion about when I say leave the line, split the line and cut the line we're going to say that the waist side is to the right of this mark here okay this is waste red represents the waste first thing I'm gonna do is cut to the line this pair of scissors is going to be my saw with a very very thin curve I wish I had a saw that had a curve this thin to the line okay we're leaving all of the line then if I say split the line, I'm trying to cut the mark in half. Part of it will be on the waist, part of it will be on the material we're leaving. And then if we're going to remove the line, the kerf is going to be on the inside and all of the mark is going to be on the waist side. Those are the kind of tolerances that you have to get to sometime depending on the wood you're using. What I'm doing now, double checking, to make sure my cuts are straight. This has been a lot of setup because of the size of it. Normally when you're making drawers, you'll use your bench vise in a plane, put the upper board on top and mark across it and the vise and the plane kind of gives you a parallel across the top of it and you can make your marks. I have my mini bench set up on this table and I took time and care to orient my boards in the correct direction, rear facing the same way left side top. Um, I took time to clamping this square to the bench and then taking my framing square and being sure that the top board is square with it. I've got it near where I think I'm going to make my marks. I've checked it twice, clamped it tight. Now we're going to start marking. The sideboard is just above the edge of the top of the bench and that gives me a tight fit here. And my marking knife is one sided. It's beveled on one side and it's not on the other. So with my poor vision as best as I can. in there too. Okay, they're marked. Then I'm going to take my marking gauge, I'm going to mark my depth, and bring my lines down. Remember I told you when you were cutting the tails 
that it was not important where the angles hit. Now it's critical because the angle may be off a little bit. This one may be one and six and a half and this one is one and five and a half. They're marked and that is the lines of the removal that we're going to have to take. Okay. One thing you can do is lower your confusion. Put your little X under each one of your tails. And uh, this is not from experience and no, I've never marked the other side and cut them wrong. It's aggravating because your project just gets immediately the dimension shorter all the way around. Or at least on two sides. Now I'm going to remove the board. Be sure my marks are square. Mark it out. But there are my knife marks and there are my pencil lines. There, that's a lot. I'm going back to this gauge. I will not move this gauge the entire project so I have the same dimension. I've got a, quite a few others hanging on the wall. If I need to do something else, I'll gra grab another one. So I'm careful. Where am I going? Put my bevel in it. that done, I like to put my pencil in the mark and highlight it. This is the reason I'm building the cabinet. Isn't she cute? Say hello, Arabella. Hello. So if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Can you smile? Pa? Smile? No? Don't like to shop, Pa. It's too much weird stuff out here. But this is why I'm building it. My little red-headed granddaughter. Hmm? Tell them about it. Lots of stuff, huh? All right. Now, Pa, I'll take you back in the house and let me continue working. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Nine months old. All right. I'm going to start on the left side of the waist. And I'm going to work my way down each one, and then I'll go back and I'll go to the right side of the waist and work my way down each one. There again, I'm going to keep my eye on the top face and the outside face, cutting to the line, cut both these faces at the same time. Then I'm going to turn my saw in, same as the tails. This is the face of the project. face side of this is down and because of the taper and the way that I leave the front of the waist it's easier to do the back side first okay so we're going to go through the same routine mark it just relieve it and remove the waist Notice I have a bit of line showing a knife mark here. It's good and flush on the front. So I'm going to take this paring chisel and work 
torque it just a little bit. Folks, here's the secret to the perfect dovetail. And with this secret, the cut is easy, uh, solo assembly, you won't have to work at it. And you can teach a four year old to do it. So, here we go. What you do is you get the stick. <laughs> So knowing that, no problems, none at all. What we're going to do is get it started. Now with my hammer, I'm going to feel the joints with my hammer, keeping it kind of level and even. I know that this end is tight. So I'm going to remove just a little bit and go from there. There's the first side. Um, you know, in the corners here a little bit and sweeten it up some more, but she's ready to go. That's a nice tight fit. Now, you probably won't see me for a while. I've got three more to do. Never find my pencil. 